Hi, this is Todd Malicote, the SEO faculty from Market Motive and online marketing consultant at stuntable.com, and I'm here today to talk about the four dimensions of search engine optimization. We'll look at a brief history of SEO and where it's progressed over the last 20 years or so, the ranking factors and how they impact SEO. Google says there's over 200 ranking factors. We're going to categorize those and chunk those down into the four dimensions of SEO. Those four dimensions of SEO are the page dimension, the domain dimension, the keyword dimension, and the offsite dimension. Now, obviously, with over 200 factors being constantly tweaked by Google search engineers, there's a lot going on in the Google algorithm. There's a lot going on in SEO, and we want to simplify that and make it more digestible as you go through the course. And we do that by looking at different dimensions of SEO, being the page dimension, the domain dimension, keyword dimension, and offsite dimension. You might hear these referred to as levels as well. Personally, I like the idea of calling these dimensions because it implies a little bit more nonlinear thinking that facilitates the creativity necessary to practice SEO. There's lots of other terms you'll hear thrown around within these four dimensions of SEO, quality, authority, relevance, and value, and these all apply to all the different areas, but page quality is really the number one concern of Google, along with providing relevant results for the searches that users do. All of these 200 factors that Google has is what determines which web pages are shown in the search results when we do a search for something like Catch Atlantic Sailfish. So welcome to the most difficult question in SEO. Why does a web page rank where it does? We look at an individual page and try to identify the factors and criteria that Google is establishing to make that page relevant to that keyword result. In this case, we can look at page authority and domain authority, just a couple of these hundreds of factors that have traditionally been very influential in the search algorithm's quest for relevance. The site with the most quality and quantity links was very powerful, and we'll see that in the history of the search ranking factors Moz, formerly known as SEO Moz, they've been doing these search engine ranking factors since about 2005. And the experts that they polled and the algorithm itself has changed in terms of both what they looked at and what was important and influential to why a web page ranks. So they look at several different areas, and again, they call them levels, page level link metrics, domain level link authority, and they break it down into these different areas here. I think the four dimensions of SEO is a little bit simpler than all of these areas, but we can look at these in more depth if we need to. And certainly you can check out their documentation as well. But I want to look at how it's changed over time and just keep a high level view of the dimensions of SEO. So this is the 2013 look at what's important in the Google algorithm, what makes a web page rank where it does, and again, domain level link features, page level link features, page level content features. You can see that links and social metrics and offsite domain level brand features still play a big role, and I chunk these all down into offsite value. And those are still a very significant percentage of what makes a web page rank. So let's look at those other dimensions of SEO. The page dimension. This combined with the domain dimension includes page quality and domain authority. And if we want to rank that page for Atlantic Sailfish or Catch Miami Sailfish, something like that, we start at the page dimension and optimizing that page. So what is the page dimension? It's any individual web page document being analyzed for the search results. This could be the content of that page, that could be the title tag, meta description, synonymous language, body copy, anything that's on that individual page. So why is the page dimension important? It's the web page that ranks in those search results. It's the title tag that's going to come up when you do that search. It's the page that needs links inbound to it and needs keyword relevance in order to achieve and maintain those high search results. A few of the factors from this dimension would be the title tag, the body text, making sure that it's topical, making sure that it's about the content that the user wants to read so that they don't click back to the search results. This is a part of the page dimension. What we call the web page header files. So this is the initial response codes that's sent to the browser when a user types in a URL. And again, we'll review this in more depth later in the course. 
the page dimension also includes the links inbound to a specific page. In this case, it could be our homepage with fishingcharters.com, the number of root linking domains or individual sites linking to that page is going to be important. So this is some of the examples of the criteria within the page dimension that Google looks at in order to determine the relevance, the quality, the authority of a page that they're going to rank in their search results. Now the domain dimension is important as well because the search engines will look at the overall domain authority or domain quality to determine where a web page should rank in their search results or where a domain as a whole should rank in their search results. So the domain dimension, what is it and why it's important? It's any variables that relate to the trust authority or affects a web page's ranking relating to the entire domain as a whole, including the subdomains as well. It could be called the root level, the site level, the top level. I call it the domain dimension. And examples would include unique linking domains to the entire domain or the domain authority, domain link authority in that case, the social media mentions or the social authority, and some other examples here. So the domain dimension includes the website domain or top level domain or URL. And the most common URL, as you can see here, is .com, at least in the U.S., .net and .org, and then we have .info and .edu, um, but most sites are .com, that is their top-level domain extension. And this plays a role in the domain dimension with exact match and partial match domains. Example of an exact match domain would be Miami Florida Fishing Charters. That's a commercial phrase that's generic, or even just Miami Fishing, like we have. If we wanted to convert that to a partial match domain, we would make something like Top Gun Miami or MarauderFishing.com, which only includes one of the two keywords and therefore is a partial match domain. Another factor that's going to influence the domain dimension is URL best practices having dashes in between keywords, having keywords in those domains. These are important factors at the domain dimension. And having a, a well-founded best practice for your URLs throughout the site is how that affects the entire domain. Another domain dimension aspect is the web server or website platform. A very common website platform is Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. This is called a LAMP platform. And that is the types of programming, the web server, the type of server that your site is built with. Windows IIS, Internet Information Services, is another example of this. You can see the market share for each of these. You can check for what your site is built on with builtwith.com. And you can see which website platform you are so you know for the domain level. Another important domain dimension aspect is the speed of your website. Fast pages retain users. It's been proven time and time again that the longer your load time, the higher your abandonment rate for your page. And this is going to impact your search rankings in a significant way. That overall speed and performance is going to impact your users, how long they stay, and this in turn is going to influence your search quality, user time on site, and where those pages will sit in Google search results. If you have a lot of people going from the search results to your page and bouncing back to the search results, that's going to have negative influence on your search rankings. Another potential negative aspect to your search rankings is if you have a lot of 404 pages. If Google sends the crawler into your site and they find a bunch of dead 404 pages, that's kind of a negative factor. If you're linking out to a bunch of places and those links are 404s, that too can be a negative factor there. And that can impact the overall quality of your domain by saying, hey, this is probably old because all the links don't work anymore. So this page is probably old and out of date and we shouldn't put it high in the search results. The next dimension of SEO we want to discuss is the off-site dimension. And the off-site dimension is any factors that affect web pages ranking that occur off the domain. And we can measure something like this with Open Site Explorer to see our domain authority or our page authority. Some other examples would be inbound link metrics of quality and quantity. There's lots of link metric related search ranking factors. There's also other off-site ranking factors like brand mentions or brand signals, social mentions, tweets, Facebook likes. All of these can correlate to better search rankings and certainly have some influence on Google search results. And it's changed over time. As I showed earlier, this is why offsite value is still so important. 
seven or eight percent for social metrics. Domain level link authority features are still twenty percent of the algorithm. Page level link features another twenty percent. That makes up almost half of the algorithm still just in link based metrics or offsite metrics. And this is shifting from link based metrics to social metrics in some regards, but the influence is still certainly there overall on offsite equity, offsite value, and it's still highly important in the Google search algorithm, certainly. Other important factors in this area include link diversity, they have different types of links, your anchor text and the keywords that it says, the relevance of the sites linking to you, the context, and again, quantity and quality. These are all the important areas, the offsite SEO dimension. We can measure this, like I said, with Open Site Explorer. We can see with phishingcharters.com, we have 35 root linking domains, which equates to 1,500 root links because some of those sites are linking to us in more than one page. You can see we only have a couple of social mentions. That's the area that we need to work on. We can also measure our page authority with the Moz toolbar. This is a handy little tool here. And all of these offsite metrics, all of this offsite value is the beginning of what became Google PageRank. Google PageRank was synonymous with link popularity, link juice, link value, this offsite equity. Now, like I said, the algorithm has shifted and we'll look at how that's happened over time. Talking purely about PageRank or toolbar PageRank isn't really effective, and people uh, say that PageRank is dead, et cetera, et cetera. But it was the foundation for this idea of link equity, link popularity, link trust, offsite value being the foundation for relevance in the search results. And all the factors related to PageRank and related to link juice and related to link value and equity is really what we're talking about here. And it started with that idea of PageRank. Now we also have other social signals and social mentions from Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and the social authority of the individuals on these sites, on Google+, on Twitter, on Facebook, is starting to become a bigger issue. They want authorship to be topical, and for those authors with high authority to come up higher in the search results and be more likely to be found by their friends and by other people that are interested in that topic area. Brand mentions could be tracked and searched with something like Topsy. We can put our brand in there and see who's talking about us and respond to that conversation. Additionally, you could be receiving these brand mentions from things like print, television, or radio, and this will be reflected in your social mentions a lot of times, and these are examples of brand mentions. In addition to positive signals of off-site value, there's also some negative signals or unnatural signals. With the importance of page rank and link authority and this sort of thing, SEOs have become notorious for manipulating link equity as well. So Google has put in place some checks and balances, with negative filters for people who are determined to be manipulating their algorithm. And this is if you're using too much unnatural, in quote, anchor text. If I linked all of the links that I ever got to my sailfish page with Catch Miami Atlantic Sailfish, that would look a little suspicious and would probably be filtered by the search engines. So if I had lots of low quality links, if I had blog spam or I went and commented on a bunch of people's website and there was no click through or no traffic validation or no social validation for the value of that page. Uh, these could be potentially negative off-site signals. There's some additional ones and you really have to be careful in your link building techniques so that you don't get into that gray area and violate some of Google guidelines. But now you have a better idea of the off-site dimension of SEO. And we'll look at the next dimension, which is the keyword, or what I like to call the other dimension, that holds all of the other factors that are not page level, domain level, or offsite level. The keyword level is really the level that determines the importance to a phrase, the keyword relevance. It's any variables or factors that impact a web page or domain's ranking for a specific keyword. So it's kind of the all encompassing category. If I do where should I find fish in Miami or Atlantic sailfish, there's a lot of moving parts as we've identified. And some of these are based on keyword relevance, but overall it's any variables or factors that impact a web page's position. This could be bounce rate. This could be if somebody comes into your site and how long they spend on your site. This could be all of those vertical blended search features or local search features. This could be the authorship box that pops up could be those negative factors that we talked about. You can have off-site duplicate content that could create those types of problems. 
all of these are going to kind of fall under this keyword or search result or other dimension of SEO. Keyword relevant scoring is at the heart of the keyword dimension, and it's really comparing the use of keywords and synonymous terms for on-page elements in content, domain-wide elements in content, and off-site references and links and mentions to that page or domain. An example of some negative factors, some additional negative factors, one of the worst offenses you can do is have a page that is no good. And by that I mean a page where if I search for Miami Fishing and I click on one of those charter guys and that page is no good and I click back and I click on a different result, that's what's called a SERP click after site inspection, sometimes referred to in similar regard with bounce rate. If I go to a site and then I bounce off of it, that's my bounce rate. Or pogo sticking. You can call this a few different things. But it's negative signal that's sent to Google that says that page is no good. I don't want to spend my time here. And if enough people send that signal and bounce or pogo stick, then you're going to have problems with that page ranking. And there's lots of other potentially harmful on-page mistakes. Not enough content, no keyword targeting, not using titles, not using sitemaps. These are some of the worst mistakes you can do on page that will send negative signals to the search engine. Uh, with the off page, there's some problems here as well. Obviously, with if you're buying links, you don't want to be doing that. Uh, have too many outbound links to 404 pages like we talked about. If there's duplicate content, these are all potentially harmful signals that you can send to the search engines that this is not a quality page or an authoritative site. Now you have a better idea for the overall dimensions of SEO and why they're important and the things that can potentially hurt you, but a lot of things you can just keep in mind in terms of quality and improving your website and the factors involved with how Google ranks a web page.